Hey everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to another YouTube video today. As you can tell, we are done with the kawaii vlogs. I really hope you enjoyed those. They were awesome to shoot and I had a great time there. But we are in Colorado at the Ridge at Castle Pines. Fun fact, I grew up in Colorado, in Denver, and then in Colorado Springs. I spent most of my time. Uh, Colorado feels like home to me and I absolutely love it here. So we're going to talk about a little bit about elevation changes and then also how to adjust when you're in different areas. Uh, the ball flies a little bit farther here, the air is a little bit thinner. So how do you play for that when you're going to different places? So we're going to talk about that today. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is determine your trajectory. Tra tra <laughs> Trajectory. 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 <laughs> how high or how low you hit it. If you hit it higher, the altitude is going to affect your ball flight more. If you hit it lower, then it's not going to affect it as much. So that's the first thing you need to determine um, when you're going through the altitude process is your trajectory. <laughs> Next thing is think about the club that you're hitting and the shot that you're hitting. So if you're going to hit a driver and you hit it high, it's obviously going to take it a little bit farther or the altitude is going to affect it more. If you're hitting a low spinning wedge shot, then obviously it's not going to affect it as much. So just be very aware of the club that you're hitting, how high you're hitting it, the shot that you're hitting, or how low. Um, if you're trying to spin it, uh, move it different ways, that's all going to affect how far the altitude will affect it. So just keep that in mind when you're picking your shot, you're in a new location that you might think like, hey, like I'm in Colorado and it's over 10,000 elevation, but you're hitting a low spinning wedge shot, then it, don't expect it to go 20 yards farther than your normal spinning wedge shot. It's really not gonna affect it that much compared to like a driver that could go up to um, 30 or 40 yards. Uh, longer. So just keep that in mind when you're picking your shot and executing um, in different elevation changes. One rule of thumb that most people do when they're in altitude for every 5,000 feet increase, you want to add 10%. So if you hit your 7 iron 150 yards, then you'll hit it 165. And then it's a 20% increase for every 10,000 foot um, elevation change. So you can just kind of do the math for that one, but that's a really simple way to figure out how far it should go and how far you should be hitting it. Altitude does not affect your putting, so just putt as you normally would. Always be aware of your carry distance. That's the most important yardage that you're going to be trying to find when you're in a new place and trying to calculate uh, how far your clubs are actually going. Um, you don't want to get total distance because that there's so many different variables that will affect how far it rolls out, if the greens are more firm, etc. So find the actual carry distance. So always look for where your pitch mark is and that's how far you hit your clubs. Carry distance is really important. So if you hit your seven iron again, 150 and you carry it 145, know that distance, know the carry distance because that's the most important thing when you're trying to figure out how far you're actually hitting your clubs. So we're talking a lot about altitude and how far the ball will fly, um, but always remember you're going to lessen your distance the closer you get to sea level. Another variation that you have to keep in mind is humidity, um, course conditions, weather so if it's hotter ball is usually going to go farther if it's colder ball will go not as far if it's humid the air means that's really thick that it's not going to fly through it as much so obviously the ball is not going to go as far um, thin air like we have in colorado ball is going to fly like crazy um, weather conditions if it's wet out obviously it's not going to go that far windy that's going to um, obviously make it go either farther or shorter downwind into the wind crosswind so forth and so on and so forth. When you get to a course, don't expect it to be one way or another. Um, you could be in altitude, but since it's maybe it's cold and it's windy, it might not go as far as you think. So just kind of try to keep everything um, in mind. A couple of fun facts about this golf, this golf course is that I played my very first 18 hole tournament here. I didn't come from a golf family and my mom thought she would sign me up for this tournament because it was close to where we live. Uh, ended up being a nationally ranked tournament of <laughs> 36 holes. Uh, the first round I shot a 96 and then the second round I shot I think like a 106. And then two years later I ended up winning uh, that same tournament here. So 
uh, it was pretty cool. But I, I grew up playing golf in Colorado. It's where I learned to play. Um, these courses just feel like home to me with like the bent grass and I'm so used to how far the, like the ball flies. And uh, this course definitely holds like a special place in my heart because it's my very first 18 hole tournament, well 36 hole tournament. And it, uh, it was cool to see like the progression every year of like getting significantly better, significantly better and then ended up winning it. Um, so it was, it was pretty fun and, and, and every time I played here it was always like 50 mile an hour winds or hail. Um, we actually played in snow one year. There was like a massive fog delay that actually canceled the first round. So um, it, we have some good stories at the Ridge. <laughs> Another fun story, we'll get to this hole in a little bit, but I wanna tell you about it before. I, this was the second round and I wasn't playing really well and I was tired, I was like 13. Uh, never played 18 holes competitively before, and it was a 36 hole tournament, so this was day two. We get to this one hole, it's uphill, I'll sh we'll show you when you get there. But it's really hard, and I end up on the verge of making like a 15, but I was like on, on shot like nine or 10 at this time, and I like went to the rules official and I asked her, I was like, can I just pick up? Because the only other experience I had were these niner tournaments, so they were just nine holes. And once you got to double par, you'd pick up. And so I was about to pick up and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm gonna pick up, I'm at double par. And she's like, no, that's not what we do here. And I just burst into tears and I was like, I don't wanna finish. And I was like, asked my dad to see if he could, you know, like hand me a club. Cause that was also like one of the rules in the nine and it was just a big learning experience for me. <laughs> so this is the hole where I had the 13 or 15 or I don't even remember how much it was but it was a lot um, but it's a straight uphill it's a very short par 4 I think it's only like 300 yards um, but it's like a split fairway so you have like a section here but you don't want to hit it there so you want to hit it over the first section onto the second section and then it's a super elevated green. So it's actually quite difficult. Um, so you have to really be careful with your club selection because you don't want to hit it too far um, and be in those bunkers. So I would say like around like a 170 is like the perfect shot. Also, another story that I just remembered. Um, <laughs> on number nine, it's a straight downhill par four and I'll show you that one as well. Um, but I hit two balls OB and then I ended up making birdie on my third ball. Um, what was that, triple? and I end up going into a playoff and then I won on the third hole with a chip and birdie um, so that was the year that I won but um, at the ridge you just never know what's gonna happen <laughs> earlier I said you want to hit around like 170 you actually can hit it anywhere I would say like perfect distance is anywhere from like 180 max to 20 I would say um, so you have a flat lie and um, it's like a good distance in. So I'm going to end up going with my three wood and I'm going to hit just an e easy three wood shot. As my dad off in the distance, he knows what he's doing. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to aim just straight ahead at the pin. When you have like an uphill shot or more of like a not blind shot but it does open up quite a bit more than what it looks like you just want to really commit to your shot and pick a target and trust it so I'm gonna pick the flag off in the distance and that is gonna be the only thing I focus on I'm not gonna focus on any of the trouble I'm just going to focus just on that so try to get all like bad negative thoughts out of your head before you hit Perfect, so I hit that exactly where I wanted to. Right before I hit it, I was not thinking of the 13 I made when I was 13 or the 15. I was just thinking of the good shot. I think some people have like a hole that they hate and it's really hard for them to kind of overcome it. So joke about it. Yeah, you maybe played it bad in the past, but today's a new day and commit to your shot and try to always make a birdie. Okay, so I am just under 100 yards. I didn't bring my rangefinder. Someone apparently just hit a good shot from the green next to me. 
Um, but we're gonna guesstimate that it. <coughs> Sorry, I just flew in my mouth. <clears throat> that is around 95. We'll say 95, playing uphill back to 100. So I'm just going to hit a really, really, really easy pitching mark. When I'm in between clubs, one thing I like to do is choke down and swing it like 70%. Perfect, so I think I hit a good shot. I should be um, close to the pin and let's make a birdie. So I was actually a bit short. I thought I was on, it must have spun back. Um, I'm not really sure what happened because it looked like it was definitely on the green, but it's a straightforward chip shot. So I'm just gonna have a bit of a descending blow, kind of more of a pop stroke and let it roll the rest of the way out. Okay, pretty easy. Um, Got my par. It's like significantly better than a 13, so I'm happy. I'm just gonna sit down. There we go. Okay, so this is number nine. I told you about this hole where I was leading the tournament by three shots, and I ended up hitting it right OB, left OB, and then I made birdie on the. the uh, <laughs> my third shot to get in the playoffs and I ended up winning. But um, I really hope you enjoyed this vlog today. It was a little bit different, a little bit more laid back. Um, words were kind of difficult for me today. We <laughs> were stumbling through things, but uh, I hope you guys had a good time and also a little story time as well of like my experiences on this course that, I mean, I've played quite a bit. So um, we're gonna try to end it here on a good drive. Leave a comment down below on your favorite part or if you've ever made a 13 on a hole. <laughs> and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys next Thursday.